Today on Fletch Talks, video game pioneer F.J. Lennon. School Crossing is an intense drama about a retired police detective who takes a last stand against school shootings by placing himself in front of his local elementary school, upsetting the community and the political forces around him. School Crossing not only asks the important questions, it offers real, workable solutions to the recurrent tragedy of school shootings. School Crossing, in paperback and for Kindle at Amazon.com. Or save 15% when you buy this or any other Fletcher Roden paperback from FletcherRoden.com. Uh, let's take a quick look back at your game called Ripper. Uh, yes. Th this was described as a full motion game. and a, I mean, there were a lot of celebrities in it. Christopher Walken, Burgess Meredith, Paul Giamatti. And uh, I, I have not actually seen it. Do I assume these are uh, computer replications of these actors in, in no, character? No, this wasn't. This was, uh, Ripper was <clears throat> 1995, we, we, we shot this. We shot it on a green screen. In, in, a, in, a, in a full out studio in New York. And so the actors and the costumes were real, and the sets were all 3D. And so they were in simulated environments. Hmm. Um, but they were shot at screen screen. So early, very early uh, in the game industry, I think Wing Commander had done this. Uh, and I think Phantasmagoria had done it. Uh, we were probably the third person to do it, and I think we did it the best. But yeah, so it really is Christopher Walken, and it really is. Bird was, I think Burgess Meredith's second to last thing he ever did. Paul Giamatti wasn't even uh, famous yet. He had never been in a movie. Yeah. So he was, he was uh, a newcomer. And uh, we had Ossie Davis was in it. Jimmy Walker was in it. And, you know, it was a big, big, I mean, it was big, scary production. Because none of us knew how to do this. And there was a lot at stake. You know, it was a young company and a lot at stake. <clears throat> a lot of mental breakdowns during that one, for sure. But uh, we got through it. And, you know, it, it turned out pretty well. It was released on the, for, uh, in the PC format, is that right? It was PC format, and I think it was... A dozen CDs, so it was expensive. You know, CDs were a buck a piece back then, even in bulk. So you're looking at cost of you know cost of production was, you know, probably fifteen dollars a unit. You know, at the end of the day, so it was <laughs> a different time for sure. The the advent of CD ROM. Yeah, uh, is there yeah. is there a, a a contemporary version of the game Ripper available? In a, 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 a no, contemporary you, format? No, there's not, but you can get on YouTube. Somebody's recorded the whole thing. I find it amazing that I can go see products I worked on 25 years ago on YouTube. Someone found it, played it, played it to the completion, and videoed it and posted it. Um, so a couple of guys I wrote that with... We exchanged emails about a year ago and said, oh, my God, this is all out there, you know. And it was fun to go back and look at, you know. Sure. Uh, it's not interactive. You've got to sit and watch sure. it. You can watch the interactivity take place. Right. And that happened for a number of games I worked on, Star Crusader and um, even the old Marvel Comics games are up there, you know. What, what so were the names of those games? Nice. What, what were the names of those? What were the names? Spider-Man and... Uh, Spider-Man, oh, let's see, I did, I did Spider-Man several times over the years. The first one was Doctor Doom's Revenge. Okay. And the second one was X-Men Madness and Murder World, which I still can't say right. Murder World is a hard one to say. Uh, and then we did The Amazing Spider-Man, Punisher, and then years later I worked on Spider-Man The Sinister Six, and uh, so Spider-Man and I have had a couple of different game development uh, paths in, you know, over the years. 
you know, the the superhero games are so prevalent now. Uh, yeah. Right up there with the racing games, I guess. There's a new Batman game every year. Um, and you mm-hmm. were really one of the pioneers of that then, weren't you? I think, yeah, I, w- I would say yes. Uh, that clearly, I mean, without a doubt, the first Marvel games ever in computer PC format were, were the ones I worked on. So absolutely, you know, and I, I look at it now and think, wow, you know, I would, you know, we were 20, 23 or four and walked into Marvel Comics and got that license and how it's changed, you know. Marvel was pretty big at that back then, but, but you know, not, not, what, not like today where it's, you know, part of a megacorp. Um, so it wasn't as... Things seemed a lot easier back then. I don't know why, but uh, but it seems it, it wasn't that hard to get the license, as no one had gone after it. Hmm. Um, so it was it was a nice one to. It's nice to look back on it now. It's a nice uh, feather in the cap. Next time, more with F. J. Lennon. If you'd like to be a guest on Fletch Talks, drop me an email. I'm Fletcher Roden. <laughs>